So I like this. This is good. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> this is Bertie. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bertie. I am the founder of Balance Live. Um, we exist to equip church tech volunteers to serve the church with live production. I'm joined here by Phil Short, who is a session guitarist in London. Hello, pleasure to be here. We are just going to have a little chat about guitar. Yes, we are. Because Phil likes guitar. I do like guitar. Yeah, guitar is great, it's really good. Every single mug <laughs> in this house has something about guitars on it. It does, yes, um, indeed. Yes, so Phil, <laughs> guitar. Um, guitar in church. Tell me how you find the transition from listening to very guitar-centric music, mm. um, where you get to play lots of cool licks, um, really play out and use a lot of your technical ability. Mm. Um, how do you find transition from that to playing within church context? Yeah, I think uh, I found it a bit of a challenge um, to begin with because um, the guitar in church music is really used as a textual instrument. Um, and I think that's the first thing to realise and understand. It's not um, music that is written on an electric guitar, like, say, um, take a classic rock song like Back in Black by ACDC. Mm. The whole song pivots around that classic riff, right? And then, you know, so Angus Young will have been sat wherever he was in his bedroom or studio or whatever, where they were rehearsing, come up with this riff and they jam around the riff and then they come up with lyrics on the top. Um, and that's how that kind of music is, is written, yeah. right? And, and when you're having guitar lessons, you get taught guitar-centric music because that's how you learn vocabulary for your instrument mm. whereas when you come into playing more pop music where guitar is either non-existent um, or it's very sparse the guitar is being used um, just to create textures and sounds and so that's usually much more alien to us so if you're a keen uh, guitar enthusiast um, but perhaps you play at, at an amateur level and I don't mean that you're not good I just mean that you don't do it as a job yeah. um, so if, you, if you're playing guitar at an amateur level you may not have um, been in situations where you've needed to play like that before mm. because all the music that you listen to or if you play in a rock band or you play in a, a covers band where there's set guitar parts your role is very clear yeah. um, and that's kind of the, the challenging thing mm. isn't it um, so would you say that pop music now is a bit more similar to um, sort of contemporary Christian worship music than rock would be, for instance? Um, yes and no. I mean, there are, um, it's, it's becoming much, the genres are becoming much broader yeah, now, but true. the ones that we typically tend to find that we play in churches are, are still in that sort of, um, sort of pop rock kind of sound. Mm. So, I mean, the classic example people always use is Coldplay. I don't really think any of it sounds like Coldplay, to be honest, but if that's your only reference. Because you didn't like Coldplay. <laughs> I love Coldplay. I'm sorry about that. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Parking that to my side. <laughs> um, you know, those, uh, uh, a Coldplay track would be a good example of a pop song where the guitar is providing a kind of texture, like a single note mm. line or something like that. It's not like a big riff with loads of distortion or something like that. But if you take a classic Hill song, track you know there's you see lots of guitar players on stage but the guitar parts are very well thought through to create a big global texture yeah rather than all focusing on you know a, a specific riff necessarily mm. and then there might be a, a specific line in um in a link that brings you back into you know out of the chorus back into a verse section yeah. or something like that so it's learning to see the guitar as a textual tool mm. Um, and a large part of that is becoming more aware of how to set up a guitar sound okay. as well. So, for example, if you're playing um, like a classic rock thing or even like a heavier rock type thing, you're going to have lots of overdrive typically mm -hmm. and play in quite a, um, a ballsy manner, you know, an aggressive kind of style. So if you're playing that classic ACDC riff... <laughs> You know, it's very big. It's a very specific kind of thing. On on a Sunday, to play in Christ alone like that is going to be, you know, in Christ alone. Yeah, sorry, terrible example. We there, should but... start back. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like there's a place for that. <laughs> but most people aren't going to like that. It's not going to come across very well. You know, it's going to be too like, whoa, what's going on? Everyone's going to be like, you're too loud, when really what they mean is you're too aggressive. They don't really mean you're too loud. Yeah. They, you know, they mean it sounds too in my face. Yeah. So how can I make the guitar sound more more textural? Mm -hmm. So 
I mean, we're not using a very heavy sound at the moment at all, so I might actually just arpeggiate some notes instead, which you hear a lot in, you know, that typical kind of Hillsong sound that has become a staple of, you know, be the Bethel guitar players are yeah. doing it as well. And, you know, so they might do something that's more... <laughs> something that's more textural and pretty yeah you start bringing in effects like delay if you turn delay on you know suddenly nice. i've got something that is a texture something else can play over the top of that mm. a keyboard part or a flute if you've got orchestral instruments in your band on a sunday you know, whatever it might be. Oh, email. <laughs> <laughs> that pan as well. <laughs> it did pan, yeah, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> anyway, back on topic. Um, yeah, so... Um, so would you use that kind of thing in a big section, or is that just for like a laid-back half-time first thing? Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's a, a cool observation. Actually, I would use that in a big section, and I might use just a slightly grittier sound, so the okay. guitar sounds a little bit bigger, but still not you know, Metallica levels of distortion. Yeah. So you, you talk know. me through what's in that sound when you were using it then, and then what would you do to step it up? To yeah, that's a, good, that's a good idea. So um, we're using an overdrive pedal into a clean amp, but I have the gain set very low. So um, I've got it set to about two or three out of 10. Okay. okay, so I've got it set there. And that allows me a lot of dynamics um, because if I, hit the strings lightly with the pick, it will be quite clean. But if I dig in, it will um, crunch up a little bit more as the pedal receives more output from the guitar. So, you know, as I dig in, I get a bigger sound, but I've not got quite enough gain to go bigger. So you can put two, two overdrive pedals into each other, mm -hmm. both set very low, and that will give a, a bigger sound that doesn't sound too distorted, but it just gives a bigger feel. So if we go just for... Just because there's two running at a lower gain setting? Yeah, it's more, it's a bit of a technical thing, but it's more to do with the amount of signal that the, the last overdrive pedal is seeing. So if that's getting more signal, it will push the, the overdrive sound more. It's kind mm -hmm. of, it's all to do with like the science of how um, the signals kind of hit into one another, but, yeah. the, the, but the effect of the sound you get is very pleasing. So if we try that, we'll put some reverb on. So we've got two pedals together now. Oh, sorry, delay, not reverb. It's just really rich, isn't it? It's just really rich, yeah. yeah it's, you know, it's, uh, it's thicker, the sound is thicker. Mm -hmm. Fast forward this bit. Yeah, so if I've got that that rhythm part, now the sound's suddenly gone very broad, mm. and the the bass and the drum, the bass player and the drummer can pick up and you know play bigger, but I'm. Um, I'm not hammering away, but it's just nicely filling out sound and making it sound yeah. really rich. So that would be typical of like a rhythm guitar part, okay. you know, that a rhythm player would mm. would do. And it, it'd be the same for approaching a lead part as well. So I could take, you know, three simple notes um, that fit in the key and just loop them round and round rather than kind of noodling. So uh, one of the, the mistakes that often can be made is um, well mistake maybe is a, a strong word but um something that sounds less musically mature perhaps mm -hmm. uh, might be oh yeah play play some single note stuff and what ends up happening is let's say you got a song that goes like christ alone we think, okay so it's an e flat major so I can play my E flat major pentatonic scale and we end up going. You know, or if you're playing blues licks and we end up noodling, we don't actually yeah. come up with an idea. And actually what I want to do is again, create a texture that can repeat round and round. So if you listen carefully to 
what's happening in those kinds of productions, you'll hear something perhaps that sounds a bit more like this. So if I put that light overdrive on and a delay pedal again, and maybe set the, the mix on the delay quite high, so you can hear those repeats nice and clearly, you might actually end up doing something more like this. You know, round and round. If it's quite high up, it's gonna stay out of the way of the keyboards and the rhythm guitar, mm. but be much more present. So I can take that exact same idea, and if I want it to be less intrusive, I could just move it down the octave. It's not going to poke out of the mix quite so much, but I'm now out of the way of um, what people's ears are going to pick up on, and mm -hmm. the vocal is going to become the most important thing. Yeah, then I guess that's a way you can use, you can add a um, contrast between sections, can't you? You still have the same idea existing yes. when it's down, but it's not popping out as much because of the roaster it's in. Yeah, exactly, mm. exactly. So Would that be something you say would be worth talking through with the person doing sound, so the person mixing, uh, sort of, talking with them, how it's sitting with the keys, if you're developing that kind of part. Yeah, definitely. Um, and you need to have musically a conversation with your piano player, like mm. who's doing what role, because you're both doing quite similar things and can do similar things, mm. um, but you're different, uh, you know, timbres, to use a posh word, uh, <laughs> of the core type of sound that you yeah. hear, complement one another in different ways. But you definitely want to communicate that to the sound guy. In the arrangement, musically, this guitar part needs to be heard, otherwise the arrangement will fall to bits and the congregation won't know where they are. Yeah. Um, it depends on, on your sound setup. Mm. Um, if you have a silent stage and you're all on in-ear monitoring and it's all completely reliant on that front of house engineer, then that's a conversation that's worth having. Mm. Um, so we do that, we have teams at our church and the sound guy is part of our team, he's not separate. He's part of the band yeah. we're all part of that but if you're at a church where um most of the sound is coming from where the musicians are sitting mm. um you perhaps got a little bit more control yeah control over that um, but also then you're working with them to figure out or with the guy mixing how is it sitting within the mix because if my amp's way too loud because yes. we have a power and it's not sitting where it needs to sit yes and also if it's too quiet it's not fitting and doing playing a role it needs to play yes. yeah absolutely absolutely and <coughs> sometimes you play and people didn't hear a thing that you played on the guitar because the sound guy's not very good and just isn't aware of it and mm. you just have to learn to shrug your shoulders go over you know because it's not about me it's not about me um obviously we want to work as a team to improve on things um but primarily we're there to we're there to serve the people who are who serve our church families aren't we? Mm. yeah so that part seems a lot more simple than, uh, I guess, what you're playing at the beginning of this video, and uh, uh, much more simple than the parts you'd be used to playing for playing guitar-centric music. Yeah, definitely, um, definitely. So yeah. how do you kind of what goes through your head in enabling you to play that, and you're not just like, oh, I'm really bored to be at church because I don't get to play guitar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a really good how question. Do you think of that? I mean. Um... Yeah, it depends on how much you get to play elsewhere, I suppose, doesn't mm. it? Um, so I play professionally, and so I'm playing a lot. Um, and so I get plenty of opportunities to blow off steam and uh, play in bands and do gigs and, and be on stage and things like that. Um, but if uh, the only opportunity you get to play live is to play in church, the temptation can be to blow off steam there or yeah. feel the desire, the want for people to know that you're really good at your guitar and that you don't, you know, just waste your money on really nice guitars and pedals but don't actually know how to use them. Yeah. I completely understand um, the frustration that can be felt by that. Um, but that's kind of a heart issue and and I have it as well in perhaps maybe in different ways in more subtle ways but um uh we're there to serve our church family so it's all about them being able to sing so I want to make the music as beautiful as possible as I possibly can because I want to honor God in that way yeah. God's given me this gift and I want to steward it by playing as well as I can so um we have this phrase called undistracting excellence at our church uh, so it's not we'll play badly so that people kind of think you're being humble. That's not that's not being humble. It's just being daft. Yeah. Um, you know that's kind of negative pride. Yeah. Look at how humble I'm being because I'm making myself sound so bad. 
that's nonsense. What you mm. want to do is play as skillfully as you can in a way that doesn't draw attention to yourself. Yeah, nice. So that people enjoy singing and be like, the music was fantastic. I don't know why it was, but the overall sound was just so good. I just wanted to sing and yeah. I loved singing That's rather truth, than it? that guitar player played an amazing guitar solo mm. because now I've drawn all the attention away from who they're supposed to be worshipping to being distracted by, wow, that guitar player like can really noodle. Mm. Um, and sometimes it's, it's unavoidable. People will, if you sound really good, people will know you sound really good, but people just get used to you as well. Yeah. So at, at our church, you know, no one ever comes up to me and says, "Wow, oh, you had amazing tone. And sometimes I can get quite annoyed with that. Do you realise how much skill it takes to have a really good tone? <laughs> You'll get there one day. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's definitely um, improving. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting there. It's getting there. I'm not saying I'm the best tone in the world, by the way. I'm still, you know, very good. <laughs> but um, but pe people get used to you, mm. you know, and um, you want them to not notice that you're doing If you're doing it well... Hopefully, people will not notice that it's going well. Yeah, um, and and that's a good place to be because they're not focused on what you're doing. Mm. Um, so that's that's the way to. I think that's the, the way to remember to approach it and to and to be willing to die to yourself mm. in the sense of you know be willing for people to have played in your church for ten years and for people to have no idea how good you actually are. Yeah, you know because you're not there for people to know how good you actually yeah. are. Yeah, I know that that can feel frustrating. I, I do get that. Because um, mm. music is a very personal thing, isn't it? And you've put hours of work in and all yeah. of that type of thing. Um, yeah, that's the, so I think that's the mindset. And we have to keep reminding each other. I have to be reminded constantly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's really helpful. Is there anything else you want to add? I don't think so. I mean, if there's anything that was unclear that we've chatted about put something in the comments you know uh, leave us a question um something that you'd like us to cover more in depth um, i mean i know we've covered things in quite a general sense so it might be well how do i do that with limited gear or yeah. you know you've just picked out those notes but how do you know which ones are the right ones mm. you know um you know we could be here all day talking about those things but if that's something that you'd like to know more on uh, then we can do something on that i guess can't we yeah nice one yeah. Cool. Cheers, Phil. No worries. Pleasure.